Good morning, and welcome to Trinity as we celebrate the life of Doris Weaver. I welcome you as we follow along in the service to find everything you need right in the bulletin. Joining me today is Chaplain Tim Weaver, chaplain at Rock Hill Community, also dear and loving friend of Doris. On behalf of friends and family, we welcome not only you who are here in this space, but also those who will watch the recording of this service and join us later from a safe distance. I invite you to stand as we begin our celebration. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows, so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen. We sing together. We know that Doris loved her hymns. And so our first hymn is In the Garden. It is printed in the back of the bulletin. Let us sing together.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Doris. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your calling we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We will have a time of remembrances, and uh, Doris's daughter Lynn will begin that time. looked at the bulletin to know it was right after the prayers. I wasn't ready. <laughs> but God is always ready. I just want to share a few stories. I know there's a lot more stories than what I have. Some of them I heard last night at the viewing. I heard Bella sharing with me all kinds of wonderful things. And I'm so glad that she and the bearers are all here with us today. Thank you. And all the rest of you, I'm so glad to see all of you here today, too. I will try to project a little more. It's a little kind of, it's kind of hard sometimes, but I'm going to try. The first story goes back a ways, <laughs> a long ways. Try the 1950s, that's long enough away. And for some reason, it was the first one that came to me, and I don't exactly know why, but the Lord knows. At Christmas time, when I was a child, probably eight, nine years old, we always had the Christmas tree in the living room. And we had a little two-bedroom uh, house outside on the outskirts of Perkasy. In my mother's habit at Christmas time, before Christmas time, she would start making batches of Christmas cookies. And maybe it was just that era, I don't know. But I can remember she went someplace and bought a set of Guardian Iron cooking ware. Does anybody remember Iron? Ga Ga yeah, Guardian Iron ware. Nobody remembers that. Now I am dating myself. Uh, a couple of the pots were probably about this high and about this round. Technically, they were soup pots, but they soon became cookie jars, big cookie jars. I don't remember all the flavors that we made. I do know that there were more than I could count sometimes. Of course, there was the ever-present chocolate chip cookies. She made something called a date nut cookie roll that were really yummy. Of course, the second, second favorite was peanut butter. And we called them freezer cookies, but they were the kind that my daughter makes very nicely where you freeze the dough, you take them out, and then you roll them out, and then you use all your cookie cutters. I remember giving you a whole set of cookie cutters one year for Christmas. She used to make all those cookies because we had families that would come to visit us at Christmas time. They would come to us, we always make arrangements a week or so ahead of time, so we know which night which family was coming. They were supposedly coming to see what we had all gotten for Christmas. Not that they would care, but we, it was a, a reason to socialize and get together. 
but everyone knew it was because we wanted to gorge ourselves on Christmas cookies. And you could have as many as you wanted and your parents were not going to yell at you because that's how you got rid of the Christmas cookies so you didn't eat them for the next six months. I have no idea why we had so many cookies except for that. They always tasted, lasted, excuse me, way past New Year's. Interestingly enough, they never got moldy. Very crummy, but not moldy. Maybe that was God's hand in that too. And we could not figure out how many years ago this happened, but there was a TV commercial featuring this, I don't know what you call it, mechanical fish, is that what we called it? Billy the Wide Mouth, ma <laughs> I can't even say it, Billy the Wide Mouth Bass. Anybody remember that? I'm seeing nodding heads, thank you. I'm not dating myself as badly then. And it had four songs that it would sing. And the first one, which is what attracted it to our family, was it was Bobby McFerrin's Don't Worry, Be Happy. Karen thought that would be especially neat for Graham to have so that she could put it on the wall of her apartment to show to people or on the door to her apartment. Maybe somebody would push the button and sing their way into the apartment. I don't know. But she bought it. And she wrapped it up as if it were any other kind of really cool Christmas present. Not like a, a gag gift or anything like that. Of course, we all realize it was a gag gift. And Grammy opened it up. And I believe Karen turned it on for her because Grammy couldn't find the button. And it would start singing, and its mouth was moving the other way around. And its tail was going back and forth like this. And don't worry, be happy, was sung. It never went out into the hall or up in the apartment. She had decided that after she showed it to all the friends who would come by, and visit with her, that she was gonna put this in the closet and next Christmas, somebody else in the family was going to get it. <laughs> and true to form, she would wrap it up very nicely, maybe in a gift bag with bows and ribbons and all kinds of wonderful things on it, until you opened it up and got in and found this Billy Bass fish. I think it went around our family three or four times Last person to get it a few years ago was Karen, our daughter. She held on to it all this time. She brought it with her last night when she came up from Washington. And Jeff helped us and we found a place and right now the fish is residing between Graham's feet under a blanket keeping nice and warm. We figured Grandma should, Graham should have something to take with her to heaven. And unfortunately, dear Lord, help us, but we decided on the fish. <laughs> we thought she would appreciate it. As many of you probably know, Graham loved playing games. You people in Rock Hill especially know Graham would play games. She liked playing Pinochle and other card games. And she liked playing board games. When our family got together on various holidays, Graham was, always all, was all, also always invited. And uh, with, her some e with her some evenings, we uh, found out that she is probably very adamant. She likes to be in control, but she also likes to win. And if she doesn't win, we play again until she does. <laughs> of course, there were times when we realized she was occasionally making up her own rules too. Well, how can you win against somebody who makes up their own rules? You know, that's hard. She was especially good at playing dominoes and uno. Oh, she was, I 
I can't think of the right word for it. Maybe it's better that I can't. But she was a fanatic about both games. If you were playing dominoes with her and you touched her penny instead of your own penny sitting on a domino, she'd, say, she'd yell at us. She'd say, you leave my penny alone. That's mine. And if you can remember my grandmother's, her, if you can remember my mother's voice, she had a little bit of a, an edge to it when she did that. And Uno, she especially uh, liked it when one of us was really having problems and we were close to losing. And somehow or other, she managed to get all the right cards and would win. And we just said, how did you do that? And she said, I'm not telling. <laughs> That's when we probably figured out she was maybe not quite playing by the same rules we were. But she loved to do that. She was ruthless when it came to Monopoly. Ask the kids, they'll tell you. <laughs> she was ruthless, but laughed the whole time. After listening to people in the last few days that she's known, it became clear to me that everyone mom has met came to know her well and loved her. Whether it was someone from Rock Hill someone from her old neighborhood with whom she would do quilting and play games, someone from Eastern Star, people from her church, or a family member, they each had lovely things to say about mom. Each person had a different story, but a similar theme. Mom was very much loved and will be missed by everyone. I'd like to close with a story that happened last Friday night, just a week ago. Because of her condition, mom had to be transferred from a regular room to an ICU room. And a couple days after her transfer was when we decided that she really didn't want to live any longer. And Friday night at about quarter of nine, sorry, quarter of 10, we received a phone call from her nurse in ICU. Her name was Lydia. She was a sweet, gentle person. And she said, I don't think your mom has much longer to go, only a few minutes. I'll call you when she's gone. I said, fine. We sat and waited for about an hour before we got the phone call. And it was from the supervisor, the nursing supervisor. And she said, I'm calling to let you know that your mom died at 947, just two minutes after Lydia had called us. And I said, oh, I was waiting for Lydia's call. And she said, well, when she talk, finished talking with you, Lydia went over into her room. She drew a chair up beside mom's bed. She took her hand in hers. And she sat with mom's hand in her hand until she breathed. she said to my mother, I'm here. I don't want you to be alone. When the nursing supervisor called us and told us mom was gone, I said, can I ask you a favor? She said, what's that? I said, when you see Lydia, whenever she comes back to the station, would you please give Lydia a really big hug from my husband and me and tell her that we said thank you for all she did? A lesson for all of us and for Christian, as Christians, we all know that God is always with us, holding our hands, 
just like Lydia held moms. God's hand was with Lydia's and moms. We're all part of God's family. Graham, mom, Gramster. That was another family nickname, but we couldn't figure out how it began. She's moved on. She's now in her eternal home, enjoying all the Pennsylvania Dutch foods she could no longer make out of the Mennonite cookbook, which was her second Bible. Of course, my favorite one was chicken pot pie. All those little doughy, ooey gooey squares. Karen's nodding because she's, she has learned how to make those squares. I haven't tasted it yet, but I will. <laughs> and funny cakes. She taught me how to make those. And now we make those too. And playing as much golf in her eternal home. Enjoying a big family reunion since she's almost the last one left. She's also being Mary, sitting at God's feet listening to God's old, old stories of Jesus and his love. Thank you, Lord, for taking her home. We love you. Thank you, Lynn. We'll take a moment if there's someone else who would like to share a remembrance of Doris, we invite you to do so. I'll do my best not to take too long or ramble. I'm the granddaughter. That's mostly how most people in Graham's world know me. I'm Karen. I live in Washington with my husband. Uh, Graham was obviously a part of my life for a very long time. I'm in my early 40s now, and I'm grateful and blessed because most people don't get 40 years with a grandparent, 20 years of which are as an adult. So I will always be grateful for the time I had with her. I've been thinking a lot in the last few weeks, but also in the last year. Um, my dad's mom died about a year ago, and so the grandparents are now gone, but I've been thinking a lot about how everybody in their life has different relationships with each other, and the Grammy that I knew is not the same Grammy that my mom knew, and the Grammy I know is not the friend or the sister or the cousin people know and my stories are different so it's a it's always interesting to me to think through the evolution of relationships and how they take shape throughout your life and how somebody who knew my grandmother in the 60s and 70s might know her as an avid golfer and I had never heard my mom's story about all the cookies when they were little I now know where I get that from <laughs> as, as Sam will tell you I spend a very long time every holiday season baking hundreds of cookies. For whom? I don't know. <laughs> I give them away, mostly. <laughs> but it's my way of celebrating the holiday, and I never knew that she and I did that together in different ways. So that's a nice piece of her. I, I am my grandmother's granddaughter. I am incredibly like her. I have a lot of pieces of my parents, but I have a lot of Grammy in me, and I regularly hold up a locket that I have which has Grammy's picture on the one side, and me and my mom and my grandmother on the other side, there's a strong family resemblance. And I, I hold it up to people and I say, I know what I'm going to be when I get old. 
This is me 40 years, 50 years from now. And I'm proud of that because she was a remarkable woman. She had a long life. She had a blessed life. She had a beautiful life. She had challenges like we all do. But she was always loving and kind and generous. I have her work ethic. Graham was never happy if she wasn't working. That's part of what happened in the last couple years was she wasn't able to work anymore. And that really bothered her. Um, she's always been community minded. She's always been, it's odd for me to think about this because we don't have a lot of extroverts in our family, but Grammy was an extrovert. She loved people. And I don't think I recognized that until the last few years when not being around as many people really made her sad. So um, I get a lot of who I am from her and I am always going to be grateful. Uh, she, she was a remarkable woman and if we can all live and have her life, it will be a beautiful one. Um, somebody this past week sent me a blessing. Um, I'm going to get it wrong, but it was something along the lines of, may your memory forever be a blessing. And I love that sentiment. And I know for me that's true. She will always be a blessing in my life. Earlier this week I said to Sam, I've always talked to myself a lot, and now I know who I'm talking to. Love you, Grammy. Thank you, Karen. Anyone else? I invite you to hear Doris's favorite song, Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snares of the fowler, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me I will answer them, and I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Six years ago, Doris was the first person that I met when I came to the community at Rock Hill. I was coming to be interviewed by a group of residents there, and Doris was the receptionist, and she greeted me. She said to me, look, we have the same last name. Now, I didn't know her, and so I didn't say to her, yes, there were three Weber brothers who arrived in the United States between 1700 and 1710 and from the German Platinum re region near Switzerland. And when they came here, their name was changed to Weaver. And it's believed that most of us have all derived from those three brothers. So we must be related, right? That would be a real Pennsylvania Dutch thing of me to do. And later we talked a little bit about that. And later I discovered that Doris loved Pennsylvania Dutch cooking. I did not know that the Mennonite cookbook was her favorite cookbook, by the way. 
He was a quilter and a seamstress. And now all of those things would be in keeping with a Pennsylvania Dutch heritage. Psalm 91 describes a God who walks with us and in whom we can trust. That was important for Doris. God is one we can find refuge in when times are difficult. And Doris had some difficult times in life. Yet she had this abiding trust that God was with her and she had faith that God would carry her through those tough times in life. She knew that she could call on God and she did that daily. She could be found in the rocker in the morning, reading her devotional guide and scripture and praying. As God cared for her, Doris cared for others. Heard that she was an extrovert, she loved people, and um, she, she cared in whatever way she could. Lynn, Doris spoke often of you. She was concerned about pastoring and how you did in that and, and was proud of, of you being in that vocation. She was concerned sometimes you didn't have enough time for yourself. Um, and then she was concerned when the church was closing, what will you do next? And that you found your way, maybe through her times of praying for you and caring for you. We had a system at Rock Hill that we would film our Sunday morning worship and then it would be played back on Thursday afternoon and and uh, until that crashed uh, 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 some time ago, um, that was part of the weekly tradition. And Doris would often say to me, I saw you this week. And then she would engage in a discussion about something that I may have said, whether she agreed with me or whether it made her think or whether she disagreed with me. But we always had a good discussion. And uh, she was attuned to the ways of God and wanted to, to walk faithfully in her walk with God. Psalm 91 ends with a promise. Those who love me, I will deliver, God says. I will protect those who know my name. And when they call me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Doris lived 96 years. God did satisfy her with long life. With her vision problems the last couple years, Doris wondered, what is my purpose and reason for being here? But now she is exper experiencing the fruit of her salvation and has completed her baptism. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus says these words, knowing full well that our human journey is not always easy, that our journey can carry heavy weight. It is not always peaceful. As we consider Doris and the gift that she is today, these words of welcome ring deeply. Jesus calls us, bids us, come, rest, be at peace. In our planning for this celebration, Lynn mentioned this passage, and I could instantly see Doris sitting at that receptionist's desk, welcoming those who came. As you told the story of family and friends coming to receive Christmas cookies to visit, I can hear her cheery welcome. Oh, hello. I can hear it in that invitation. 
with her gentle and oftentimes clear instructions to us all, I can hear an invitation intended to make us at ease, grace and clarity and hospitality. We are welcomed into the arms of our Savior, and I know Doris, as a woman of faith with the same story as Chaplain Tim tells, always holding in prayer, always discussing scripture, always asking about God. Through the struggles and the sufferings, loss of loved ones, loss of sight, loss of hearing, loss of mobility, Doris heard that invitation from her Lord, even in the discomfort, to come and rest. When I visited her last Thursday evening and she was uncomfortable, visibly, not sure that she could see or hear me when I leaned down and started saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Doris's body stilled. There was peace. In that prayer, in that habit, it was God curling up with us in that moment, saying, Come, rest, be at peace. Later, Lynn told me how, as a child, Doris would welcome Lynn into her bed in the early morning and teach her to pray, curled up together. And I know that in those moments when Lydia was with her at the end, God was curled up, arms around them, bidding rest and peace. There is no doubt that Doris completes her baptism, that the promises ring true. She is safe, at peace, no more worry, no more challenge, only that joy and delight with her Savior. And now this invitation to come, rest your burden, is one that we hear in our grief, in our suffering, in our journey of faith. That in these moments of sorrow, Jesus also bids us rest, trust, believe. Christ's, wor uh, Christ's words offer the same glimpse of hope to us that they offered to Doris. Now, we gather together and remind each other that as Doris loved and served us as a woman of hospitality and faith, so we now carry those hands and feet of Christ in us. So that as we celebrate a long life, well-lived, well-loved, we also look around to one another and share that same love, share that same joy. And as we gather to reflect on the gifts we receive from Doris in our shared walk on this earth, we now wonder what those gifts are that we take each and every day as we continue our walk, receiving a gift and carrying it with us. And we gather here today to be reminded over and over again that that invitation to come, all who are weary, who are burdened with grief and sorrow, pain and suffering. Christ's arms are there, same as for Doris, as for us. That Christ bids us rest in glory, see a glimpse of hope in the love and care of those around us, take a word of promise and hold it fast. For indeed, the peace that passes all understanding, even in these times, is an invitation from our Lord to simply lay our burdens down, rest, be loved, celebrate. Amen. We'll sing another wonderful hymn, one of Doris's favorites, Amazing Grace. 
I invite you to stand and sing these words of promise. Please stand. of intercession, and we'll conclude with God of mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of all, to life everlasting. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
and destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Will you join me in praying together the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend Doris to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Doris. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our final hymn is On Our Way Rejoicing, remembering that we celebrate the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, the completion of baptism. We give thanks to Christopher and Drew who are, who are leading us in the music today as we sing our final hymn, On Our Way Rejoicing. Mm -hmm. 